the pa uh, paper I am presenting is entitled Lactase Persistence as a Factor in Establishing the Common Identity of the Rigvedic and Harappan Civilizations. Now, this is part of a larger article called The Common Identity of the Rigvedic and Harappan Civilization. Here, I am only presenting the part about the lactase persistence. Now, there have been many studies establishing the common identity of the two. For example, many papers in this seminar colloquium as well as in other seminars and uh, conferences. And uh, the books by B.B. Lal, the recent presentation by Semenko in uh, Sangam Talks. So many people have established this identity, common identity between the two. Now, here I am presenting the data concerning what is known as lactase persistence. Lactase is the enzyme in the body which helps us to digest milk, helps all mammals to digest milk. And in all mammals, including human beings, it decreases sharply after the weaning phase. However, in many human communities where dairy uh, industry is very common and uh, milk consumption is part of their culture since a long time, they develop this uh, ability to digest the uh, they don't develop, they retain that uh, lactase persistence even after the weaning period. So this and uh, this is because of that special enzyme in the body which helps them to digest the milk. Now in the Aryan debate, this is important because North Indians and Europeans continue to have lactase persistence long after the weaning period. The Rigvedic culture as well as the reconstructed Proto-Indo-European culture is very much a pastoral culture because the cow is the most important uh, animal in the whole of the Rigveda. As we saw just now in um, Michel Daninoji's lecture, uh, cows, horses have all kinds of symbolic, spiritual and mystical meanings because they are, uh, the cow especially is very important. And uh, this importance has remained from the Rigvedic times to the present times, means even today, Hindus are associated with cows more than with anything else. So this is something which has continued from Rigvedic times to the present. But it also goes back into the proto-Indo-European reconstructed culture. Because there also, there are only two animals which have a common name in all the 12 branches of Indo-European languages. One is the dog, which was of course domesticated in pr uh, primitive times has nothing to do with the Indo-European discussion. But the cow is the only other animal which has a common word in all the 12 branches. And um, if the Rigvedic culture represents this proto-Indo-European culture to the fullest extent, because there are eight reconstructed words for cow. And all eight of them are found only in the Rigvedic and Indo-Aryan branch. They are not found. Some of them are found in some other branches. We are the, the Rigvedic culture is the only one which retains all the eight. So, and this has been a major argument that uh, the pa these were pastoral Aryans who came from the steppes and uh, invaded or immigrated into the areas of the Harappan people who were urban. And this is the main argument which is usually made that uh, the Rigvedic people were pastoral people and their culture was completely different from the culture of the Harappans who were urban. Now, uh, and uh, this, according to them, proves the Aryan invasion. Now, there are three big major factors which uh, should be taken into consideration. First, the Harappan culture was also a pastoral culture. The Vedic people are concentrated, considered as pastoral on literary grounds, whereas the Harappan civilization is actually pastoral because the cow was domesticated in two places in the world. One is in the Harappan area, which is Bos Indicus. And the second species of cow which was domesticated was in Turkey, that is Bos Taurus. So you have Indian cattle and Western cattle. In addition, in the Harappan civilization, also the buffalo was domesticated, the Indian water buffalo. So you see the pastoral civilization, it was a very much pastoral civilization. You know, people just discuss the cities of the Harappans, but no culture, no civilization exists only in cities. 
the cities have to be sustained by agricultural and pastoral communities covering huge areas around the cities okay so the first point i was making is that the harappan culture was also a pastoral culture the second point is that all the cattle in india from the harappan times till the present time only during the colonial period do we find western cattle being introduced into india so we have had only boss indicus all over india right from the harappan times to the present times now this the western cattle were introduced only by the colonial people therefore the cattle of the vedic people were also boss indicus that is the very same cattle which were domesticated by the harappan as far back as at least 5000 bc now if the vedic people had brought a pastoral culture with them all the way from the steppes they would have been bringing western cattle with them so the evidence shows that they did not bring any cattle with them it is therefore impossible that they could have they could have been pastoral people coming from the west the rigvedic language as we said contains the fullest representation of the indo european uh, cattle vocabulary so which shows that even the proto indo european cattle vocabulary pertains to the boss indicus and not to boss taurus so while there is evidence of western cattle coming into india there is no evidence of western cattle coming into india but there is evidence of indian cattle being taken to west asia and central asia after 2500 bc and these indian cattle spread as far as eastern europe so this is also the time when indian elephants and indian peacocks start appearing in west asia along with the proto mitanni people who had migrated from vedic india taking with them a vocabulary found only in the new rigveda and a vocabulary which is completely missing in the old rigveda now i have you know in my articles i cannot elaborate that here uh, shown how the vocabulary of the old rigveda is different from the vocabulary of the new rigveda and it is this vocabulary of the new rigveda which is represented in the mitanni language now the geography of the old rigveda is even further to the east so what we see here is a movement of the ancestors of the mitanni people from inside india into the harappan areas and then further west right up till west asia iraq and syria and this is proved by the not only by them taking indian cattle with them but also indian elephants and indian peacocks so we and uh, finally we come to this question of lactase persistence now this is an argument which has been made by uh, uh, in the by the recent, recent people who are promoting the genetic arguments they claim that lactase persistence proves the that uh, aryans came into india from outside now in my paper i have presented a map showing the areas of lactase persistence in india today which has been and this is found in the article herders of india and european share their dominant predominant allele for lactase persistence by romero and others which appeared in the uh, site molecular biology and evolution in august 2011 now this map shows us which areas in india have lactase persistence today today and which areas don't so what you see in the map is that all the entire area which has lactase persistence today is the area of the harappan civilization now according to the aryan invasion theory the harappans uh, were driven south and they were dravidian speakers and they were driven driven south by the aryan invaders or immigrants or whatever so what we should have been seeing is lactase pers persistence which was there in the harappans should have been transferred to south india while the aryans who came outside may also have had lactase persistence if they had been having western cattle with them but the situation we see is that this lactase persistence in the harappan period was exactly in the same areas as it is today so the main thing this shows is that there was no major exchange of population no outsiders came and took over the harappan areas no harappans were uh, you know dis dispersed from that area to south india or to any other part of india so this shows the continuity of major 
there may have been small minor migrations in, inside india from one part to the other but there were no major migrations most of the people in the harappan areas today are the descendants of the harappans and most of the people in the south today are descendants of the original people who were living in the south at the time of the harappan civilization so all this completely dis, uh, disproves the aryan invasion theory and all the arguments based on lactase persistence this uh, all this has been given in detail in the actual article and uh, i end my presentation here and uh, i thank you very much for allowing me to present this and i'm very sorry for any uh, you know audio problems etc which may have taken place they may have taken place from my end also thank you very much